somebody I made it in the name of Jesus we give you glory we give you honor thank you Lord for another day another opportunity another year the decade of the mouth God that we can speak your word in spite of what's happening in our life thank you so much for joining us here at St. Mark Deliverance Center we are excited what a song what a praise what a worship that's been given to us on this day and we know that God's got you just like he has me. And so we're going to dig into this word and we're just going to give you something, something that's going to help you to get started on your new year. A reminder of what God is doing and what he's got planned for you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him just one more time. Can you? You can praise and give him glory and give him honor. He's a mighty God. He's a worthy God. My Lord, we give you glory and honor. I, I am so excited. I am so excited. I'm excited even for you because we know that we've gone through some things. We went through some things in 2022 and the other years prior with the pandemic and so much just going on and we look at the weather, but we know a God. Hallelujah. His promises is always, his word is truth. It never falls to the ground. It produces it brings forth fruit, and for that we praise, oh, Lord God Almighty. Can we pray? Father, we are so excited, and we lift your name. We glorify who you are. 
Each time we wake up in the morning, we think of the goodness, your mercy, and your grace. So as we come together this morning celebrating another door of opportunity, a new year, we give you glory, we give you honor. We would not be here had it not been for you, for your word, for your promises, for hope, for miracles. And so, Father, you've given us the power as your children, and you've given us the authority to speak into the atmosphere. Hallelujah! So we decree in this atmosphere and declare, God, that, Lord, you're going to show us even greater in 2023. Healing, God, miracles, suddenly, breakthroughs, family reunion, coming together. God, we decree it into the atmosphere. And we say thank you for the healing power. Someone healed cancer. Diabetes, Father, from high blood pressure. God, you see all things, mental, depression. God, we speak to the body, to every organ, and we command it under your authority and your word that you've been given, and by your stripes we're healed. We speak it over them right now. Whoever watching, who's listening, we are saying yes to your will and to your way because we know that's the only way we can get through this. So we thank you, we glorify you, we worship you. Let it be that this flesh lay itself down completely, that you may rise up and give us your word. We love you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you, it is something, it is something to behold when you know the Lord for yourself, that even in the midst of the darkness of your days, that whatever you might be walking through that has you stumbling and almost falling to the ground, that you know a word from the Lord in your belly, a seed that's been planted, that tells you to rise up, that he has a plan for you. You remember the scriptures, you understand who he is in your heart because he's your Abba. And so today we're going to talk about just that. Your seed is powerful. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. Your seed is powerful. And if you would go with me into Mark 4, verses 26 through 29, and I'm going to read this in the King James Version in Jesus' name. And he said, Go, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed shall spring and grow up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle. He began reaping it because the harvest is come. That's Mark 4, verses 26 through 29. When you talk about the word of God, and it refers to seeds, uh, the, the, it refers to itself as a seed at least 44 times in the New Testament. Now, where the Greek word sperma, it was translated as seed. So we know at least 44 times in the New Testament, God, the word of God, refers itself to a seed. So what is that? To conceive and give birth to the miracles. That's the S you need. You must first plant God's word like a seed in your heart. To conceive and give birth to miracles that you need and I need. We must first plant God's word like a seed in your heart. In other words, conception cannot take place without planting the seed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The planting cannot take place. You can't do any conception. It cannot take place without first planting the seed. I've met many Christians over my time who prayed and would get frustrated and they just believed that God was going to intercede for them. 
and then to do interventions in their life. And when they become frustrated with the results, uh, it's, it becomes they're missing something. They're missing the seed of conception. So you believe in God to intervene for you, and you're trusting him to do those things that you need to do in your life, but there's something that's missing, and that is having that seed in your heart. When we talk about planting, you have to allow that seed to grow. So once God's word get into your heart and then get into your being, you have to allow that word to grow. In other words, you have to, he said, meditate on it day and night in the book of Psalms. So you have to begin to meditate on that, that word and, and produce that word into your being so that it can start producing on the outside. So it works itself from the inside to the outside. So if you're not allowing that word, in other words, uh, when you allow it to keep going in and out, uh, you keep pulling it up and you say, God, you're going to do it. The next thing you know, you get on the other side, God, I, I, I'm not sure if you're going to get this done. Lord, I'm waiting on it. It hasn't came yet. I don't believe you're going to do it, Lord. I know I'm asking too much. All of that lacks faith. And I know there's circum circumstances, excuse me, in your life that you're saying, I need him and I need him now. And trust me, he is a right now God. But you have to allow his word to be planted in your being, in your heart. And you have to allow that to grow, to nourish in Jesus' name. In Mark 4, the Lord taught three parables, which illustrates that the word is to the kingdom of God what a natural seed is to a harvest. I'm going to say that again. It illustrates, you can go into that Mark 4, the whole chapter, it's three different parables in there, and it illustrates the word is, what the word is to the kingdom of God, what a natural seed is to a harvest. In other words, you can cheat or manipulate anything uh, that man created. Nearly all of the systems in man, we've seen it, so many people hacking different things in the computer system, but you can, it can be created. Matter of fact, the legal system can be beaten. Our educational system can be beaten, but you can't change seed, time, and harvest. I'm gonna give you two examples with that. First, in Genesis 8 and 22, it reads, while the earth remaineth seed, time, and harvest, and cold, and heat, and summer, and winter, and day and night shall not cease. There's gonna be a continuation. As long as the earth remaineth, you can't change the seed time and harvest. I'm gonna give you a little bit more with that. The seed is the word of God. When we go into Mark 4, verses 14, and the ground is our hearts, and that's in verse 15. Our hearts were created by who? By God to bring forth fruit. And when his word is planted in them, it begins to what? Grow. So just as the seed has to remain in the ground over time to germinate, or the word of God has to abide in us. So we have to understand that it takes time for that to grow, as the word has to be able to grow within us. So whatever you plant, be it in the ground, be it in your heart, you have to give it time to what? Grow, hallelujah. John 15 and seven says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall what? Ask what she will, whatever you wanna ask, ye will. And it shall be done what? Unto you. What would happen hmm, if you plant a seed, my God, and a seed in a garden and you dug it up every morning, every morning to see if something's happening? You keep getting it in there, you done planted the seed now. You done planted, you done planted the, the, the whatever you want to plant in your garden and you keep pulling that up just to see what that seed is doing. It will, what, it will die. It will never produce. You keep raising it up. Man, keep trying to go in and see what's being done, it will never produce, it will die. You have to have faith that the seed is doing what God created it to do. You have to leave it alone, and you have to make sure that you start saying the word by faith. God, I know you're going to do it. Just like you sat down and you put a seed in a garden. You have to give it time to grow. Tell somebody, my seed is powerful. Oh, we're going to get to another part. My seed is powerful. Your seed is powerful. It is the word of God that is being brought forth in your heart. 
Once you allow that and meditate on that thing, you can ask what you will when you begin to abide in him, when you begin to join in in his will, in his way, you're going to be at a place where the devil, no matter what life gives you, no matter what happens, and even when the devil steps in, he cannot destroy you. We can only allow him in. We can. But with the word of God, abiding in you, that seed that's in you is powerful. It is powerful to bring forth miracles. It is powerful to stand on whatever you are dealing with, whatever you are going through. Hold on, I'm getting a little excited. Let me get back. Let me get back here. My God, my God, my God. So we have to realize how important it is. Your seed for 2023 is powerful. What are you planting? What are you bringing forth in the word of God in your soul? What are you saying? What scriptures are you bringing in and remembering and meditating on day and night? Are you bringing forth, I am fearfully and wonderfully made for those who are going through a self-image uh, or a, a low self-esteem. What are you saying to yourself? Are you believing God that he, was, uh, he is a healer? What his word says. By his stripes, he's healed. By the stripes that he had to take for us, we are healed. What are you putting into your heart? What are you allowing to germinate? What are you allowing to grow? My God, your seed is powerful. And the devil knows it. The enemy knows it. They know it. You have false prophets. You have false teaching. Everything to keep you bound up in that little box that they have. But God is an unlimited God. An unlimited God. And you need to start speaking to your 2023 and telling 2023, I decree and declare that I will do those things that I have been called to do. I shall set out on a path that God has called me to be into. I shall do things because he said I'll go exceedingly, abundantly. I love this part right here above all things that you can ask or think with the power, here we go again, the power, my God, the power that is setting within you, the seed is powerful. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to use the seed in another way. So let me say this. Those who tried to bury you didn't realize you were a seed. I'm going to say it one more time. My God, you ought to get excited about it. Those who tried to bury you didn't realize you were a seed. They didn't realize that once you were being buried, all you were doing was during the you were preparing yourself. You were growing more powerful than you were when they tried to put you down. We got to realize, even though the enemy would try to come, and we know to steal, kill, and destroy, and when they talk about that, they talk about the Pharisees and the false teachers as well, that we know for a fact people are trying to come up against you when they try to bury you. Go know that God has you. And when they try to bury you down, all they're doing is preparing you for your next level. They're getting you ready so that God work in you for the work that God has in you. Let me slow down. I get excited when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's set forth. So let's, let's go into the word to make sure what I'm saying is correct. In Matthew 13, and we're going to verses 36 through 38, it reads, and I read it in NSV, it says, then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds, or we know it as the tear of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed is what is the sons of the kingdom. Come on, that's you and I. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. So what is that saying to you? They're saying that we are a seed. We are the good seed that's being planted. So it's letting you know we are a seed. You need to tell somebody, I'm a seed. I'm a powerful seed. You're not just seeds that you are planting, but you are seed that's being planted for the destiny God has for you. My God. So when they try to bury you, oh, my, 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 my. Think about Joseph in Genesis, and we're going to go back into the different chapters of 37 
through 42. Whenever you want to, take the time to read about Joseph. Many of us have heard about Joseph. We've read the story. We have talked about it. But one of the important things that we have to understand about Joseph, even though his brothers were cruel to him, and they tried to destroy him and take him out, and even though he went through all of these circumstances, even being put in jail, he kept the love of God upon him. Realize that whatever they're trying to do in burying you, you don't try to seek the revenge because the word of the Lord reminds us that the battle belongs to God. All you've got to do in a battle is face it. Hallelujah. Woo, my God. When you are in the midst of a battle, you know the battle belongs to the Lord. All you've got to do is face it. They tell us the song that we used to hear, you know, it's just stand. It's just stand. Face it. Watch God do it for you. So when Joseph was standing there, he was believing God for greater. Whether we realize it or not, he was believing God for greater. And he was allowing the word that was given that he was reading in the Old Testament, when he was reading to just what get into his heart. And the goodness of God was developed. My God. So by faith, he knew that no matter me being in prison, no matter when they tried to take and destroy me, Whatever it is, God is going to see me through it. Tell somebody that he's going to see me through it. Oh, come on. We need to repeat these things because we got to believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because when they talk about you, they lied on you. Victory is when you allow God to fight your battles and you stand and you what? In your ground with love. Remember, they didn't realize that you were a seed. <laughs> Remember, they, they're just so upset about what they feel about you or the jealousy, they're just trying to destroy you. But all they're doing is burying you so that you can grow. My God, get this for 2023. Don't you worry about the revenge. God got that. Man can't do anything to God himself when he touches because he's a God of righteousness and of judgment. Hallelujah. The twin towers in Jesus' name. So in conclusion of what we're dealing with talking about, don't give up because of impatience and doubt. So sow your seed in faith and trust God to bring forth what? A ripe harvest of blessings in your life. Make sure that you are, you are sowing the proper seed. Make sure you are planting the right seed. So whatever's coming up, because it tells you seed time and harvest time is a continual thing. It is going to grow, it is going to harvest for you. So don't you give up. Don't be impatient. When you get impatient or you start to doubt, pull into your faith, your soul. So when you sow your seed in faith and you trust God, I can guarantee you it is going to take place. When you receive Jesus, my Lord, as your Lord and Savior, there are many amazing promises that becomes available to you. All you need is the knowledge of what's available and the faith to claim it and claim it for yourself. Every Christian has the same opportunity, my God, to flourish and to be blessed because of these wonderful promises that God himself has given. Hallelujah. The Lord says this, and it blessed me in James 4 and 2. You have not because you ask not. That's one of my favorite ones because I believe in asking. He also tells us not to fear because of what? It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's in Luke 12 and 32. So you can have two people sitting next to each other, both with the same Bible, one blessed and the other one seems not. Why? Because God don't play favorites. Come on, somebody. He don't play favorites. He responds to faith, to those who believe who he is, that he is, and that he is a rewarder to those who what diligently seek him in Hebrews 11 and 6. This is God. For 2023, remember that your seed is powerful and that you are a seed. And that whatever God has promised you, my Lord, my Lord, whatever he has called you to do, it shall be 
once you get that word inside of you and inside of your heart and allow that to grow, allow yourself to meditate on a day and night so that when you don't have that Bible in your hand and something happens, it's in your body, it's in your mouth, it's in your mind, it's in your heart, and you can immediately speak that scripture out, and that scripture is God himself. He is the word, and it will not fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we've given God all the glory. Bless your name, Father. And we are so grateful for not just another new year, but the fact that he's reminding us that my seed is powerful because it's the word of God. I'm powerful because I am one of the sons of the kingdom of God. So whatever people try to do to you, if they try to bury you, all they're doing is allowing you to grow. Keep your mind on Jesus. Find people who can you can talk to, you can pray with. He said when two or three are gathered together, he's in the midst of thee. Keep your mind on him. And we're going to believe that 2023 is going to be one of the best years ever. It does not mean that things are not going to happen because when we read the word, there's prosecution all over, not just in the U.S. of A, not in the United States, but it's all over the world. But it's the seed that becomes powerful, his word that would change things. Hallelujah, glory to God. And it's his seed, his word, that when you speak it, when you decree it, when you declare it. I've said it once, and I've said it many times before. Hallelujah. It may not happen when you want it. It may not manifest at the time, but I know it for my own life and for myself and those around me that he is an on-time God. And that's what causes doubt and frustration to come in when it doesn't happen when you want it. But oh God, he's still working on you. He's still testing you. He's preparing you because when you get to the place that he's called you to be, he wants you to be as strong as an ox as you stand on the rock. He wants you not to be ashamed of the gospel but speaking, whether you're young or old, I'm so grateful that I know him as my own personal Lord and Savior. And what better way to start your new year off by saying, Lord, I know you. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And that you believe, you believe with your heart that he died for you and I. And on the third day, he rose. And the receiving of the Holy Spirit is what he left with us as he went on to be at the right hand side of the Father. All you have to say is believe it by faith. And your new year, <laughs> and it will be new because you're a new creature in Christ. You're a new creature. You are now the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. So we are so grateful to God. I hope this word touched you in some type of way to remind you how powerful, how dynamic, how domino, how you are. The word of God stands true. Yes, there's prosecutions. Yes, there's false teachers and false prophets. But the word is real. The word is solid, like a two-edged, double-edged sword. It can slice through anything that the enemy would try against you. Yeah, yeah, he's going to try. <laughs> oh, but he cannot succeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So wherever you are, just lift your hands to him. Release yourself and surrender and say, this is what I need. I need you, God. I need you to enter in. Have your way. 
Come on, just, just take a moment with you and just worship him. Right where you are, hallelujah. God, we worship you. We thank you for this new year, new hope, new opportunity, a new life. I don't care how I walk in to 2023. I'm in it. Hallelujah. If you walk in with heartache, you're in it. If you walk in wondering where your next paycheck is going to be, you are in it, and God has an opportunity and a door by faith. Woo! Shebandoro Sunday. By faith to turn it around. You need to begin to speak. This is the decade of the mouth. Speak over your circumstances. Go into the atmosphere and call it out and watch him do it for you. On behalf, hallelujah, of St. Mark Deliverance Center, my Lord, my Lord, I feel the move of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Wherever you are, just lift your hands again. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. You are so powerful. You are so dynamic. And God is a revealer. He's going to reveal what he has said for you. It might be a little at a time, but trust him. Trust him. And use that mustard seed faith or the faith that you have been using that have grown to what we know as a breaker, anointer. Use it. From St. Mark Living Center, we thank God for you, taking the time to be with us on today. We love you. We look forward to you again coming back to visit and be with us. God bless you. Happy New Year. And until next time, have an awesome day in the Lord. We love you. God bless.